slash rules horror posted by you slash inevitable underscore cookie underscore 74 welcome to happy life incorporated employee manual hello customer we at happy life incorporated want to ensure that you never feel sad ever again we ensure our best service by training our employees as best as possible every employee is given an employee manual so they can learn to give their 100 percent one each employee must wear the happy life uniform consisting of the happy life shirt blue jeans and tennis shoes two happy life employees must always smile at the customers you cannot cry or frown or show any emotion other than happiness in front of our customers failure to keep this rule and you'll have to see the manager you can't bring yourself to smile or you're having a bad day mrs montype will assist you in the nursery then you'll be smiling in no time you can only drop your smile on break Three, each customer that comes into happy life must first be assisted by an employee into the wiping room where their memory will be swiftly erased to ensure that those pesky traumas don't bother our customers. Failure to follow this rule and you'll have to see the manager. Four, we're all family here at happy life, even if we're not related by blood. Be sure to address all the admin as father or mother and address your fellow co-workers as big slash little sister or big slash little brother. Failure to do this and you'll go to time out. 5. If any loony comes inside our resort shouting nonsense, be sure to deal with them as quickly as possible, even if that results in the termination of the loony. We'll handle that. 6. Every three years, we have a party celebrating the birthdays of our fellow customers and employees. Everyone must be smiling for this ordeal. Failure to obey will result in immediate termination. 7. You have a total of three chances to break the rules, then we will resort to more, stricter punishments. 8. There is no such thing as quitting here at Happy Life Incorporated. Once a member, always a member. Now that you know the company rules, be sure to follow them to the letter and give your 100% here at Happy Life Incorporated. We thank you for joining our family and remember our motto, happiness is everything. Got questions? Call. Posted by you slash inevitable underscore cookie underscore 74. I think there's something wrong with me. You know those voices? Those voices that tell you things, and make you see things? Things that you don't want to see, imaginary scenarios ending in disaster, or that small sense of doubt in your mind? Everyone lives with it, some choose to ignore it, whilst others like myself, who just, don't act, we don't push it out, we don't ignore it, we let them speak, but we don't fully listen to it. It was just two days ago that these thoughts were nothing more to me than just that, thoughts. I was working on a picture of mine in my living room, and all I could hear was what I always hear. Something's wrong, it's not good enough, that'll never work, it's not the right color, your mind is broken, just like your perception. Just the average thoughts one hears every time they do something. The doubt, over and over again. Getting tired of my mind being itself, I left the drawing unfinished and went to my bedroom. I stopped when I heard a knocking on my door. I opened it, and there on my porch was an envelope. I observed the letter, and I picked it up. There was no name, or address, nothing. I know what you're thinking, don't tell us you opened that envelope? I did. I opened the envelope and pulled out a letter and a vial. Wasn't much written on it, just a phrase in Latin. Quid si quad intus erit, forest venet? I don't understand Latin, nor do I know anyone who does, so I assumed the letter probably wasn't for me. So I placed the letter in a different envelope and resealed it. I then placed it on my table, unsure what to do with it. I would probably keep it at home, I couldn't take it anywhere else, it had no address so I couldn't return it anyway. I looked at the vial, it had some black liquid reading, drink me. I don't know why, but I opened it and took a sip out of the vial. Like, it felt as if I had no control over myself, I just opened it, next thing you know I had drank the whole thing. It felt like, something heavy was going down my throat, and it tasted metallic. I just looked at the empty vial, placed it on the table, and walked into my bathroom, and I looked at my reflection, expecting to only see me. I saw someone else in the mirror though, someone right behind me, staring at me through the mirror. A tall man wearing a trench coat and a fedora hat was standing in my shower. He was wearing a smiling mask on his face that looked to have been bolted on his face, and he had blonde hair under his hat. He was bent over, and looking at me. I jumped, shocked at the unknown man in my shower. He didn't speak to me, rather he walked up to me, walking out of my shower and right in front of me. He loomed over me, making me very uncomfortable. Hey, what the f hash are you doing in my house? I asked, trying not to sound scared. The man looked down at me before grabbing my shoulders. 
I didn't notice how long his arms were earlier, they were all the way down his body and touching the ground. I also didn't notice the white gloves he was wearing on his hands, I mean who would care about that detail? This man was in my house, he was trespassing. He then spoke, his voice, I can't describe, you are, broken child, it's not right, I can fix you, we can fix you. He pulls me close to him and I couldn't move, I couldn't even shout. Just as I was trying to struggle, I felt myself sinking, sinking into the man's body. Whatever this man was, there was no way he was human. I blacked out after getting halfway into his body. I remember waking up in, I don't know, it was somewhere, some inky black space. I just felt as if I was floating. I saw two figures looking down at me. One was the man I saw prior, and the other was another man, but he had an unkempt beard, a fancy suit, and a tall top hat. He too was smiling, but it wasn't in a mask, I could see his pale face. When I woke up this morning, I felt dizzy, I felt drunk. I got up to see that same man in the trench coat, thing staring at me. I tried to think, tried to hear my thoughts, but I couldn't. I couldn't hear the very voices in my head. I then heard something, but not from my head, from the man standing above me. Time to get up, time for another day of this mundane life, he said as if he was me or speaking from my perspective. His voice sounded the same but with a mixture of my own voice. As if my thoughts, were alive. I sat for a moment confused at this circumstance, and the man grabbed my wrist and dragged me out of my bed, scaping my hand and legs on the bed frame. I screamed in pain and tried to fight him off, but his grip was strong as he pulled me into my closet. I sat up and looked at my legs, they were scratched from the dragging. Another day, another horrible outfit for myself, he said as he stared down at me. I quickly got dressed, not wanting this man to do anything else. I looked in the mirror, am I really leaving the house in this horrible mess? The man said before grabbing me and dragging me through the hallways, making me bump into the shelves and picture frames. He dragged me to my desk and pointed to the unfinished picture. Might as well get this over with while it's early. The man said as he sat me on my chair, and grabbed my hand. He started to move my hand around and make me draw lines on my picture. It's so bad, I'm doing such a horrible job, I call this art? The man said as continued to force my hand to draw on the paper. I tried to fight against him, but that seemed to piss him off, and he banged my head on the table. I'm such a moron, always hurting myself. The man said as he lifted my head off of my desk. I saw a small puddle of blood from my nose. That was several hours ago, he's still here and I don't know how to get rid of him. He's been dragging me all over my house, and kind of making me do things that I'd usually do, but in such a violent manner. I've locked myself in a room, and he's screaming at me and trying to break down the door, that door's going to give way soon. I'm covered in scratches, scrapes, and bruises. I'm surprised that I don't have any broken bones. I'm in pain, but I'm not scared, I don't know why. What do I do? Does anyone else have this problem too?